las distracciones y narrativas reinan este mundo tecnológico. Todos tienen una opinión de lo que es la verdad y lo que es mentira. ¿Quién controla el mundo? Los aliens son real. Vivimos en un Matrix. Estas preguntas serán debatidas con José y Daniel G. Explorando y descubriendo las verdades de nuestro mundo. Nuestras creencias. Y nuestro reality. Welcome to Cultura Truth Project. Dímelo, mi gente. Welcome back. It's another one. Otro episodio de Cultura Truth Project. Jose G. Daniel G. Dímelo, mi gente. What's up, bro? Bro. Bro. I mean, all I got to tell you, I, 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 all I got to say is simply this. If you're not part of the Supporters Club, Supporters Only Club, you need to subscribe now because... Bro, what we're about to get into today, we previewed and we kind of went over some deeper stuff before, and it's just about to get crazy. As this, this is one of the craziest podcasts I've ever seen. Where this is gonna be crazy for just <laughs> us two, we should have gone live. This is about to be nuts. All right, yeah. donut move over, Jose. It's Jose Donut today. It's Jose <laughs> Donut today. Well, guys, as always, we thank you for uh, being on the show, for listening, for watching, for tuning in. We pre really appreciate you guys. Guys, uh, we haven't been on for a few weeks, so today we're going to dive into everything that's turned the world upside down over the last two weeks. Uh, the Trump assassination, Biden dropping out of the race, and all the predictive programming and all the stuff that we should have known some shit was going to go down, and it happened anyway. So... We're going to jump into that. As always, guys, want you to guys follow us on all of our social media platforms. Follow us on YouTube and on Rumble, Cultura Truth Project. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook, Gonzalez Media TV. Subscribe to the podcast on all of our platforms. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts. Leave us five-star review and support the show. Just like Danny said at the beginning of the show, go to the Supporters Club. Supporters Club on Spreaker, $3 a month. Link is in the description. Audio only. You can't get anywhere else. Only on Spreaker. You can't get it on YouTube. You can't get it on Rumble. You can't get it anywhere else. Only on Spreaker. Three dollars a month, bro. So last week you were here. You were hanging out with me in Florida. Congratulations, by the way. You got engaged. So huge congratulations to you. But so much went down on your way here to Florida. On the and on the way out. And then on the way out. And on the way out. On the way in, you drive in. You get here like at one in the morning, but in the middle of the day, it's all over the news. There was an assassination attempt on, on former President Trump's life. Uh, it was captured all over the news. Everybody saw it. Uh, the gunman uh, you know, pulled the trigger eight times, missed, and it hit his ear. There was blood all over his ear, and the footage is everywhere. Uh, we actually have about, you know, some some stills here that I, I wanted to share. But yeah, man, it's uh, it's crazy, dude. So like when you were driving down, like what was you going through your mind when you heard the news and then you started seeing the stuff on socials? So like it's weird, right? So it's like the same stretch of highway where I heard. All of the news, both sides of the news, right? The Republican side and then the Democratic side on the way out. It was crazy. And then it's like, you know, my boy uh, hits me up and he was like, hey, bro, uh, check out the news. They just shot Trump. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they shot a former sitting president? What in the heck is happening? Right. And then, you know, my my co-pilot, my new fiance, she was like, she got right on the Googling. She is like a Latina on the phone. She figures out, you know, people's, you know, social security numbers without her knowing <laughs> two bits about them. She's great. And she goes, yo, 
eight shots, guys dead, one other person, whatever. Like, and I'm like, bro, this is like happening. I'm on I-10 driving 70 miles an hour. I'm getting all this information. And the entire time I'm like, yo, this hasn't happened to anyone, former president or not, since Reagan. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is like, if this is a hoax, if this is a work, they just committed the best work of all time because this is guaranteeing him a seat in the White House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and, I agree with you, man. Right? And then a week later to the day, right? Like, then I'm here that Sleepy Joe is dropping out the race and Kamala is freaking jumping in. And then I'm like, yo... The crazy thing What's about this happening? whole situation is so I was driving that morning and um and I got the notification from a group chat that I have from one of my businesses, and that's how I found out. So I got home and then I, I told I told Brenda, my wife, and she's like, Really? And then then it was all over the news. And the first thing she said was the same thing that she she's like, There's something fishy about this, because it's like the timing is too perfect, right? It's like, why would this happen all of a sudden? You know, and the big thing right now that's going on the Internet is uh, this is all orchestrated just so he can have a better position so he can solidify his way back into the White House. Right. And I don't know if that's true or not. What I will say, though, there is a lot of stuff pointing that this was going to happen. Right. So there's this one picture. As a matter of fact, it's not even a picture. It's a card. It's a playing card. Are you familiar with the Illuminati game? So this is an Illuminati. Uh... So, th so they're like tarot cards, but, it, but it's called the Illuminati tarot game card, right? And just like how you have your tarot decks, you have the death card, and, the, you know, the, both, they have their own Illuminati card, right? So check this shit out, bro. Check this shit out. So there's this card that the Illuminati game has called enough is enough and then the card look at that face doesn't that face look like donald trump and look right over here a little line wisping wow. on the right side of his ear and look what it says on the caption at any time at any place our snipers can drop you have a nice day <laughs> all right and it doesn't stop there dude so the day before the, the assassination attempt happened, the assassination ha attempt happened on the 13th of July, which happened to be my anniversary, by the way. So it was on the 13th of July. The new Captain America movie trailer dropped Friday the 12th. Now, I'm not going to show the entire or, or any... Uh, motion of the uh, trailer but I do want to show you this portion right over here where Captain America is in a room with the President of the United States who's played by Harrison Ford who is right over here let's move forward a little bit not the first time Harrison Ford plays a president by the way yeah so there's something happening in the hall while the president is giving you know, Harrison Ford is giving his uh, his speech. This guy starts attacking. And shoots the president. What? What? So that's the day before. OK, now I wanted to show you this video, too, that our boy Juan put up on his TikTok, breaking down that Trump Illuminati card and the assassination attempt. And it's very, very enlightening. Let's check it out. Did this Illuminati game predict Trump's assassination attempt? As we all know, July 13th at approximately 6, 11 p.m. Flip it for me. There we go. <laughs> You know, the, you know, the people in the occult, they like to do things in reverse and fucking invert everything. Just saying. There was an attempt towards Trump's life. 
The Simpsons predicted his presidency and what looks like his demise as well. Although the producers said the pictures were fakes. Were they though? Life imitates art far more than art imitates life. Illuminati is a card game made by Steve Jackson Games, inspired by Robert Anton Wilson and Robert Shea's book, The Illuminatus Trilogy. The game has secret societies. You saw the Illuminati dolphins there? On top of the pyramid? Oh, oh the great orgasms. That fight for global control using a mix of legal, illegal, and mystical tactics. It was created as a humorous and satirical take on conspiracy theories rather than a serious one. But some believe the game has the ability to predict major world events. The card making rounds is the enough is enough card. The description says, quote, at any time, at any place, our snipers can drop you. Have a nice day, unquote. The face on the card kind of looks like Trump too. I mean, what do you think? On March 1st, 1990, the Secret Service did raid the offices of Steve Jackson Games in Texas. They confiscated hard drives and documents, some of which were about the game. Not that the Secret Service really has the best track record. Guys, this shit is absolutely wild. I have no idea, you know, why this is all happening when it comes to the predictive programming, but it's there. It's there. We saw it on the card. We saw it on the Captain America movie trailer. Juan just broke it down. Now Danny's back here. Let's see. Can you hear? Can you hear me fine? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Perfect. So now that you saw the breakdown of the uh, of Juan's uh, Trump card, and you saw the predictive programming on that movie trailer, what what did you think of those connections there? Um, here's the thing, man. It's it's a little too coincidental, and I, and I don't want to say it's confirmation bias because you know that's the only problem with the conspiracy theory space and the truther space. There's a lot of confirmation bias, right? Like if you look for it, que es lo que dicen en Puerto Rico que busca encuentra, right? Yes, yeah, that's so, your reticular activating system. You know, mm-hmm. your brain's gonna find what you're looking for. It's gonna know. give you that confirmation. So I don't know how synchronous it's 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 it's, it has a weird eerie planned out feeling to it a hundred percent i'm not going to deny that and my gut tells me that's what it is but to say that i'm a hundred percent sure about that that's also a lie because i'm not sure that's true as well okay so what i will say this is the flip side is what makes me feel like a lot of this was planned out is the reaction from the other side to this Mm-hmm. Right. That's the part where I'm like, this is too fucking planned. This is too planned. What is the one person on the Democratic side other than Joe Biden that has the worst chance, the worst on every poll, on every side and every metric has the worst chance against the former president, Donald Trump is Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. And you know, what's interesting about this whole thing, too, because. You know, you know, we spoke about that Biden had dropped out, and now Kamala is going to be taking that 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 position. But what's interesting around the whole situation surrounding the assassin the assassination attempt of of um, of Donald Trump, not only that we had some predictive programming with the movie trailer, but check this shit out. We've talked about Bohemian Grove before. We've yes. talked about that on this show. We've had Thomas on the show who's broken down several times. And uh, we've we've even showed footage of the Alex Jones video where he uh, gets a very blurry footage of the cremation of care. So there's this guy that put this video up called Dancer on YouTube who dropped the video that's going super viral right now. And he actually broke into the Redwoods into Bohemian Grove during the cremation of care okay he yeah, had do done these, it do these people have like death wishes like i wouldn't do that like i wouldn't exactly a blanquito you know well, you know so whatever <laughs> pero, pero, pero here's the thing dude so the guy had gone a few weeks before to scope it out and there was nobody there because bohemian grove is a midsummer um retreat so there wasn't time for them to get all together but the guy was able to get all the way to the owl statue and he has footage of it in the middle of the night and all that stuff. But 
this video is 35 minutes long. We're going to go through some clips of here. But it's 4K footage of him in the Redwoods at Bohemian Grove uh, recording footage of the cremation of care. So we're going to take a, 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 so, so a look together, react to it together so we can take a look at it. But Over there in the middle. Definitely looks eerie. Very sketchy. We're just scrubbing forward through it, getting through some of these parts here. This is becoming a problem, Jose. What's becoming a problem, Danny? It's um, Bohemian Grove is becoming a problem. <laughs> Well, here's it's, the thing, right? Before, nobody was really talking about it. But now, since Ryan Garcia started talking about it, now this guy went in here. And now we have footage of, of this stuff, dude. And this is what the powerful people, the elite people do. One year, they get together, they discuss events. Oh, shit. Let's check this out, bro. robes on they have like fire oh shit no that clear 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 footage wow 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 and they're still walking in a file line What's interesting at the beginning of the ceremony, and I have to look it up where exactly in the video it is, but the guy, the the the, the master ceremony guy, he's like um, saying, uh, "We're in the temple of the owl. Pay your homage to him, or something like that." So the owl deity that's in Bohemian Grove actually goes back. Are you familiar with Mithra, the deity Mithra? Okay, go ahead and uh, take, take the video down because it's it's causing a little delay on my end. Okay, so I know Mothra from Godzilla, <laughs> <laughs> right? But Mithra, no, I'm not. But here's the thing. And, and this is where I say it's becoming a problem. I'm not saying it hasn't been a problem, but it's becoming a problem not only to themselves, because they're losing their anonymity. But we're also seeing so much now, right? Because my whole thing was, like, prior to starting this, this project, literally, this cult Cultura Truth project that we've been doing, I've always asked myself, Bohemian Grove, if it's a real place, why hasn't anybody gone up there, put some trail cams, and just, you know, recorded these people without their knowledge? There we go, somebody just did it. Now it's like, okay, so this is real. Then also with all the stuff and all the information that we've kind of gathered through our months of doing this in the past year, it was like, can we even trust this guy? What if he's a plant? <laughs> what if he's the plant? And I'm not trying to be like the but ultimate. But that's a good way to think too, because right now we're being bombarded with so many different things. What can you believe? Like, are you even real, bro? Like, are you are you an AI? I'm AI. I'm AI. Are you an AI avatar supposed to be look yeah. and sound and talk like my brother? But are, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like I it, don't know. It, I don't it, know. You're right. You're absolutely right to be to have that train of thought because is this, is this revelation of the method? Could be. Well, uh, well, revelation of the method is what we saw with. Captain America, you know, in the predictive programming, they're showing no, you what they're no, going to no, no, do. No, 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 but, but hold on, hold on, hold on. But if they're doing these devious things, and the only way to be guilt free of what's about to happen, let it be the apocalypse, the, the overthrow of the US government, whatever, wouldn't you have to tell the entire world so you're free of karmic, at least according to the rules, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't you have to reveal all this? Right, I like you have, you have to. Have to. I think you have to reveal the method on how they're gonna do it, right? So, but wouldn't this be part of it though? This is part of their method. True, it could be. I mean, it could be, but 
my thing is like wow it's so coincidental I, and i don't believe in coincidence uh, coincidences but how synchronistic is it that you have the captain america trailer dropped the day before the trump assassination then you have bohemian grove happening during that speech during the trump assassination you know i mean i don't know for sure it's i mean not a fan of Bill Maher, but there's this one saying that he says. I don't know if it's true. I just know it is. <laughs> what? Who's not to say that they weren't discussing that same exact topic during that? And and the gunman was just like, okay, like I don't want to be like that guy, but it could be. So okay, so here's another thing, right? This is all the disinformation, and you don't know what's real, what's not, right? Directly after. Get it, claro. That we're not trying to spread any misinformation. We're just we're just reporting. We're just, not even reporting, but we're speculating. We're speculating, <laughs> right? So let's say that the information that came out directly after the Trump assassination attempt it has even a sliver of truth. Let's just pretend, right? If the guy who was the gunman was a was a registered Republican. Is this another Jack Ruby situation where, you know, the guy wasn't really aligned with Trump and maybe he was a never Trumper, maybe he was a Democratic operative, maybe he was a deep state operative. And because, hey, maybe they promised him a million dollars and, you know, to expunge his record. And right before the dude got away with it, they just decided to cap cap this dude. I don't know. I'm going to throw it's, this it's, one out there, bro. I'm going to throw this one out there, which is one that kind of makes sense to me. And there's going to be people out there that are probably going to be like, oh, no, Jose, that's impossible. But whatever. You know, but dude, after witnessing seeing all the shit that we've seen and heard, nothing's in the impossible. last year. In the last year, nothing's impossible. But what if this guy, which I really don't know his name because he doesn't even need he did he doesn't deserve for me to say his name. He just looks like another school shooter. But this guy, what if he's in a McUltra, a McUltra asset? What if he's an MK Ultra, right? Possibly. What if he, he, a lot of them are still active and dormant. What if he was one of those guys, right? Because this guy has no prior offenses. The guy looks like a high school nerd. And and who's to say, who's to say that the MK Ultra program ever really ended? That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's not called MK Ultra anymore. Maybe it's called, you know, Project Something Else or you know, whatever, right? Maybe it's part of Project Blue Beam or whatever. I don't know. Name a program that the U.S. government is the deep state, right? Like add, that's the, deep. add the word project and add a fancy word that sounds science, sciency, and fictiony on the end, and you'll have you'll have some type of you know but, but, conspiracy uh, operation going. <laughs> I'm not trying to be like I'm trying to truly break this down and how this could have happened because here here's the thing: we as we the U.S. government prides themselves on saying that we have had the safest elections in the world. I don't think we're having the safest elections in the world. Let this happen in any other third world country. What's happened in the last two weeks, we would have sent troops to that country to overthrow the current government and install our own. If this happened in Nicaragua, where they tried to assassinate a political opponent, and then the the president dropped, and then some figurehead decided to step up. Like we would have been like, "Yo, I go." Something well, I mean, don't look, smell right. Look at the shit that happened in Haiti last year or earlier this year, right? They they blatantly assassinated the president, or they or something. They ousted the president. The president ended up going to the Dominican Republic because he, he they, they were pretty much hunting them down so he can they can kill him, and then it was just bit one big coup d'état, right? So, like, also, that's like another thing that that kind of has me worried right now, because another thing that I'm noticing in the patterns and connecting the dots when it comes to the predictive programming is the whole situation surrounding Kamala. Right. Bro, so now the we have Simpsons thing, the Simpsons well, thing. Again, well, we go back out. to that. Well, you will check this out, dude. So uh, now that Biden is dropped out of the race. Kamala is the assumptive nominee. She still hasn't been picked by her party, but that's what the media is leaning to be her, right? What if 
this is all just staging up for President Biden to step down as president in August and Kamala to become the 47th president of the United States going up against Trump as president. And there is evidence to support this claim. We, like you said, we have the symptoms predictions, right? But there's been a lot of more programming and, and priming in TV. So when we look at shows like house of cards, right? You got Claire Underwood who what takes over after her husband can't be president anymore. He dies. Okay. Then you have this one right here with Kamala Harris and Lisa Simpson. Look at that. They're wearing almost identical outfits, bro. Okay. Then you have this other show, Veep. Yep. With Julia Dreyfus. Kind of the same situation. The Veep takes over and becomes president. So now we have three shows that kind of give us that confirmation bias, right, of what we can expect. So I probably would not be surprised at all. I'll be like, oh, shit, it actually happened. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if something like that actually does go down in August, just so they can say they'll have a better chance. But we know that this is a movie, bro. You know, this is all scripted. We just got to be at the 30,000 foot overview to see what the play is. And I think I think that's what the play is. I don't know. I'll tell you this. It's a scary time. And this is this is this is you know this is not a conspiracy theory thing, this isn't anything. This is me putting on my historian hat on and saying, "Well, this has happened before. It hasn't happened in a presidential sense, but it's happened in a in a monarch sense. You know, the Bolsheviks versus the the the, the Russian Revolution. This happened. They they took out you know a major monarch. <laughs> then there was a civil war." And then there was first world war when they took out Franz Ferdinand, you know, they took out, you know, it's happened before. And I think we're coming into a period in history. And this is where I think, you know, the, the, the world order and the new world order and the current world order, it's where the cycle is like, okay, where we have become soft and now we're entering really hard times. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the beginning of that, you know, People say it's time for an apocalypse. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. But I'll tell you this. I don't like it. I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what's going to happen. I feel that, you know, uh, great, great uh, uh, independent news news analyst, um, Tim Pool, uh, he says that it's like, hey, get in shape by November because you never know. Hmm. Either you're going to be in shape <laughs> You're going to be in shape for the good things and you're just going to be able to benefit from being in better health and in better shape or be in shape by November because you might have to actually fight. And I don't want to say those words in, in that way, but it's to the point where it's like, what's going to happen? Are we even going to have an election? Like, like I'm, I, for the first, in my 33 years as, as a human living in this country, I'm going to say, I don't even know if we're going to have a presidential election. What if, you know, for some weird emergency powers order, whatever that what was that order, that executive order 33 something, whatever that President Bush put in while he was in office for a moment like this is like they're going to suspend the elections. Well, I mean, we we saw all the chaos that happened this past weekend, too, with all the Internet outages the airports uh, with all the flights being canceled. It, it, dude, this was a global thing. And this is something that we've talked about on the show too, while talking about the, the leave the world behind and the outages that we had reported back with T-Mobile. That was a small thing compared to what happened last week. Right. So you have that thing going down with the, with the internet outages, the communications, the airports being shut down, <laughs> Biden steps down. Kamala comes in. Trump gets assassinated. Like it is absolutely wild. And you, you're absolutely right. There's something changing right now. And there's this book, this excellent book that I've read. It's called The Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. If you guys haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. But Ray Dalio, he's a billionaire investor, and he breaks down how the world empires. Uh, the world reserve currencies change every 150 to 200 years. 
And this is the graph that he points out. And this fits the United States perfectly to the T, right? So when we were becoming the big power around the world, we had strong leadership, we had incentiveness, we had education, strong culture, good resources and allocation. We had good competitiveness, strong economic growth and income growth and strong financial markets. And that's in the new order. That's when the when the when the big superpower is becoming strong, right? They're on the rise. Then World War II comes. We beat the Germans. We beat the Japanese. Then a few a few years later, we become the world reserve currency. We're at the very top, right? So now we're the superpower of the world. But what happens when you're at the top? When you're at the top, you start becoming a little bit more complacent. So you become less productive, overextended. You start losing competitiveness. You start you start noticing gaps in, in the wealth, right? So that's where we were about 20 years ago. I would say probably more, maybe 30 years ago. But now we're starting on the decline where we have this large debt, $34 trillion worth of debt right now. We printed money like crazy in 2008, 2012, and 2020, right? Internal conflict. What happened in 2020, 2021? Vaccine versus no vaccine, mask versus no mask, Republicans versus Democrat, right? Loss of reserve currency. Guess what happened last month? Saudi Arabia didn't renew their petrodollar agreement with the United States. So therefore, all dollars that are traded in, 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 in oil are no longer traded in dollars. Now they're traded in yuan, okay? 17, we have weak leadership. We saw that over the last two weeks. And then the last one is civil war and revolution, right? And we're at the, honestly, we're at the cusp of that. And it could be either a physical one or a mental one. I honestly uh, feel it's no, more no. of a spiritual one. Uh, no, but- no, no. It's more than just spiritual, right? There, and, if, and if you listen to a lot of the political analysts and people who I don't, study, I don't listen to any of those. I, I get it. I get it. But this is part of staying informed and people who know the trends of a changing world order. Right. We've been in a cold civil war for the better part of the last decade since the Obama administration. We've been in a very cold civil war and it's slowly heated up over the last five years. Right. When you talk about the 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 occupation of cities by the extreme political left by uh, January 6th. And it's just the pendulum swinging back and forth, back and forth to each extreme. And it's something's going to give, right? Is it going to be uh, the Marxist left, you know, going full-blown revolution? Or is it going to be, you know, the gun behind every blade of grass in the United States that's going to prevent it? I don't know, but it feels like we're, it, it feels like we're, we're about to jump out of the frying pan and into the fire and this is just looking at it from a political sense, the spiritual sense. We've been in this turmoil for a long time, bro. The the long time that the you know the removal of God from schools, the removal of God from from the home, the the decimation of the nuclear family since the early forties, right? It's like the everything. It's we're in a in a complete attack on not just the basic freedoms that the United States has, has, and I don't want to even sound like a conservative. This is just truth. This is truth. This isn't, I don't care how, which way you vote or what political leaning you believe in when hardcore liberals that come from our parents age are saying, yo, this is crazy. This is happening, right? Like dude, everything. It's insane. When you think about it, when there are literal People from the gay, lesbian, and and bisexual community saying this is too much for even us. Hmm. And you know what's interesting? Did you get to catch that um, video breakdown of the interview with Jordan Peterson and Elon Musk? No, I have not. So they had a re- they had a two hour interview, and there's this clip in the interview near near the end of the interview where they're talking about that ideology about the lgbtq plus the about the transformer movement and you know all that you know because we can't we don't want to say those words we don't we don't want to piss off the google algorithm uh but uh it's already pissed it's already pissed elon musk 
said very clearly uh, his son Xavier, he's trans, he, he he's a transformer. And he says that his son Xavier was killed by the woke mind virus. Wow. His son. Now that then fueled a lot of speculation. It was like, wow, was his son really dead? And it was like, well, his son is not really dead. His son is now a woman or a girl. You know, he decided to do that. But what he's saying is because of that uh, way of thinking that with that rhetoric, right. Throwing that out there, uh, states uh, legally allowing children to take, you know, gender reaffirming medication, you know, things like that, you know, that, you know, a, a, an 11, 12, 15 year old kid shouldn't be taking because their brains are still developing, you know, and Elon Musk just kind of breaks it down. He's like, listen, if they're going to make that decision, you know, wait until they're of age, you know, there's a reason why, you know, they put labels on cigarettes or on alcohol or on certain things because they know that, you know, the human brain stops, you know, is, is developing until a certain age. And when you do or when you force that type of treatment on someone, then what are you doing biologically to that body? You know, there there's so, been so many cases of children being sterilized because of these treatments, you know, that they, they can't have children now if they wanted to procreate, you know? Uh, so what Elon Musk is saying, he's like, listen, because of this ideology, I no longer have a son, <laughs> which is powerful because we know that he, his son is still alive, but it's not the biological son he was born as. It's not just a mind virus, man. It's, it's like the video we played on, on the, on, on the, uh, on the podcast before of the devil is the ultimate agent of confusion. It's like we have people, there are people convinced that they're women and women convinced that they're men. And then there are people that are that are espousing these things. And then you see it like like it's so confusing that even people within the faith, the faith of Christianity, they can't even agree on whether to let these people in. But then it's simple. They can't even you know, agree they, they on, a, on a the verse. truth and people who uh, believe in Yahweh and people who believe in Yeshua and Jesus Christ and the Messiah and the finished work of the cross who say, no, 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 no. We're not here to, to. No, no, but, but the truth is still there, right? Like there are people who stand for the truth and they go, Hey, 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 there's a reason it's called an abomination, right? Like there's a reason it's this, it's not because is we don't love them any less. It's because there's there's two things we're called to do is to procreate and to inhabit the earth. And you're telling me that by doing this, you're 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 stopping that. Well, well you're here's stopping the thing. that. Why why and here's, here's the thing. it's the truth. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Uh but well, here's the thing. What's the the the, the devil's greatest trick is to he convinced the world that he wasn't real. <laughs> OK, so if he's conv able to convince the world that he isn't real, what other shit do you think he's able to confuse everyone with? He is just like he said. I mean, that video that you that, that we reviewed a few weeks ago last month. I mean, that hits hard because it's it's 100 percent accurate, you know, and dude, it's just it's it's unbelievable what we're seeing right now. It's just no, unbelievable. No, but. Bro. But like you know what? It's weird. It, it's weird. It's weird. But it's on us. But it's on us to use our discernment, right? To look up to something higher. For me, as Yahweh, Yeshua. I don't know what it's for you guys. I hope that it is that that's the same case for you. And I pray for all of you guys that listen to us and watch us. But that's really what it's about, man. For me, that's what it's about. Because if I focus on that, then I can I can I can drown out all that noise. Because that's really what it is. Oh, it, it, it's a hundred percent noise. noise. It's a hundred percent noise. noise. It's a hundred percent noise, but it's part of like, you know, me and you were having a very deep discussion during our, our, our time in Florida about, you know, end times. And it's like, at the end of the day, we can only interpret the scriptures as the best that we can with the knowledge that we have mm -hmm. and the, and the, and the revelation that, that the great one has given us, right. The, the, the great I am has given us. But at the end of the day, the only truth that we can agree on, whether it's the end times or not, it's 
the one verse that it always reminds me is like, you, you will not know the day nor the time, but you will know it by the season. Right. And I believe we're entering the season and I don't know if it's the season of his actual return. I don't know. Are you but familiar? I, are you familiar with the uh, marriage of the lambs? So I was OK. So, so I was watching a video today that was breaking down the marriage of the lambs. And basically, from what I gathered, and again, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm just going to try to summarize it as best as I can so it can make sense. So when we were having that deep conversation about the end times, we had touched on um, when Christ returns, he's he's coming back for his church. Yeah. Right. Right. So basically, that's what the marriage of lambs is, is basically basically that every single person who has accepted Christ living or dead, when Christ comes back, he's coming back for them, right? Yes. And these are all the people that have not only acknowledged him, but have also accepted him to his heart and that have obeyed the laws or, or, or the, the commandments, have stayed pure, uh, waiting for him, right? So basically, the mar so when in the Bible, from what I understand, uh, Yahusha is also referred to as the bridegroom. Right. So yeah. there's so yeah, there's a so there's a there, there's several verses referring to, um, you know, when the bridegroom is ready for you, make sure that you that, you know, that you're ready for him, you know, so you always have to stay ready. So when so basically the marriage of the lambs wow. is um, the people, the church of uh, of Yahusha that has stayed waiting, had stayed disciplined, had the, stayed the in the ecclesia, law. The ecclesia, the ecclesia, and then and, yeah. and then, the, and then the, those are the ones that uh, that that go back with him and will, will reign with him for a thousand years. So that's what I thought uh, when we were talking about that and in in the end times. And dude, I think right now, but 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 you have to understand too, right? What does being prepared for the bridegroom means? Right. And it, and it states it in multiple verses in the Bible. And I think Peter says it best. Right. I think Peter says it best. And, and, and it's, you know, and I, and I don't have my Bible in front of me and I can't pull it up because I am, like I said, I'm running technology wise. I'm running bare bones today. But he says, you know, it's it's the idea of repenting. And what is repenting? The confession of sins to one another, right? The becoming part of the ecclesia. And what does the word ecclesia mean? Ecclesia is the original word in Greek for church, which means the chosen ones. So when you follow the ones, right, and follow the way, the one way, which is following the son of God, which is the son, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you follow that and you believe in him and you believe that he died for your sins. That's what it means being prepared is the only way to the father is through the son. To the father is through the son. He is your ultimate advocate. The bridegroom is your ultimate advocate. Think about this, right? Think about the, the picture of, of the marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Like, even though I, I have not been the most perfect husband in my past and God knows that I've, I faltered there. But what is the job of the groom? <laughs> in, in, in his, in, at all costs. You know, the, the Bible calls us to die mm -hmm. as Christ died for the church, for our spouses. Right. And the wife, all we have to do is submit to him. So it's like you, you, you people preach. It's like you have to fulfill the law. Yeah. Fulfilling the law is is the renewal of the mind and the renewal of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is why, like when, when we had um, uh, the guy from Psychosmos, I forget his name and I do apologize. Matt. Yeah. Uh, Matt, when we had the man, he was like, Hey, this is how you live out the life. And then I was like, no, there's a spiritual truth. And then there's a renewal of the mind. Right. So the spiritual truth is when you accept Christ into your heart and you repent of your sins spiritually in that moment, I believe that you are saved, right? Like when you make that choice, when you leave all your choices behind and say, this past me is dead mm -hmm. and I am now alive in you, in him. The physical manifestation of that benefit takes a minute to see. Mm -hmm. It takes a minute. It takes a while because you, it's 
we're called to 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 take up our cross. And what's taking up our cross in today, right, is getting rid of sexual immorality, is getting rid of addiction, is getting rid of a foul mouth like I do. God knows outside of the camera that I have the one of the worst mouths to ever <laughs> come across this earth. And that's something that God is working in me every day. But it's it's one of those things where it's like you bear that cross and you and you renewing of the mind daily to meditate in the word daily. And you know, I and one of my one of the things is to really get in there and see what the word says and why it says that, right? Like one of my and this is this is kind of just an example of it's like, hey, Psalms 23. People always say, Oh, you pray Psalms 23. It's like, hey. Psalms 23 is not only a prayer for peace, but it's it's a guideline of how God wants you to walk with him. <laughs> right? It's like he's like, I don't, you know, I don't need anything from you. I need you to be with me in the good and in the bad. Mm-hmm. Right? When we call upon him, it's like he's not here to be a superhero. He's here to help you endure. And it's and you think about those things and you think about the people of God and why God was so vengeful and wrathful in the old Testament is because his people, his chosen ones weren't walking with him. He said, Hey, Hey, I don't need nothing from you. I just want you to be with me. And you walked away. And, and you know what I find so interesting about it too, is because um, when Yahusha was having that conversation (laughs) with his disciples and he was talking about the the parable of the wheat and tares. And you and I talked about that last week. Um, one of them, I, I forgot which uh, disciple was talking about. He wanted clarification on it, right? And basically, and, and I'm just going to summarize for, for the listeners what the parable of the wheat and tares is. So the parable of wheat and tares, Jesus is describing a farmer who has uh, who has land. He uh, puts seeds of wheat in their leaves. And in the night, a, th- a, a, a person with bad intentions puts seeds of tares in the same field. When the crop grows, his um, his helpers notice that the tares have grown along together with the wheat uh, when harvest came. So they ask the farmer, farmer, hey, what do we do with this? So the farmer tells the, 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 the reapers, hey, I want you guys to take all the tares out. You're going to bundle them up and you're going to put those in the fire. The wheat, you're going to gather all the wheat up and you're going to put those in the farm to harvest. So when Jesus, when Yahshua was was explaining the parable, he was explaining that the wheat is his church. The tares or the, 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 the evil person that sowed in the tares is the devil. The tares are all the people that are like pushing the false doctrines that you hear, you know, the prosperity doctrines and, you know, this and that, the secret, things like that, you know. Those are the tears, the people that aren't pushing the right message, people that you see in the media, um, you know, pu- pushing a different version of Yeshua, right, or, or of God, you know, things like that. Those are the tears, right? Then the field is his kingdom, right? The reapers are Yeshua's angels. The farmer is our Elohim Yahua, right? So he's explaining this how everything is going to go down and how the devil will get into society and plant the little seeds that will mess up the entire crop. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're seeing right now. No. And it's, and it's funny, right? Cause I, I love how Jesus spoke in parables, right? Because he's telling you how God operates, not only in the physical, but in the, in the spiritual realm. Right. It was like it's like another one is uh, the parable of the talents. Right. Or or it's it's just another just to that because this entire parable that he's talking to to the disciples kind of happens all pretty close together in the Bible. And in, in the book of Luke, he talks about this, too, in really, really well detail. And then in the, and one of the parables is like, hey, uh, a farmer needs help. Right. And. He it was, I think it was like you get paid one talent or whatever, you know, whatever one dollar is, for example, a hundred dollars in, in a time. And I'm paraphrasing. It was like for a day's work. And then the the head guy goes, Well, we need 10 guys. So they hire 10 guys in the morning. Midday, he goes, Hey, we need another 10 guys. So they hire another 10 guys midday. 
And then at the end of the day, he was like, hey, to finish up, we need like another four or five or whatever. But the farmer or the owner of the land says, you know, this is Jesus telling the story. And I'm paraphrasing. And if I'm wrong, please fix me and quote all the right Bible verses. Put it in the comments. Was, put it in the comments. Put it, put it in the comments, right? He was like, you know, whatever. So then the owner of the land says, hey, bring me all the men so I can pay him out for the day. And the owner is God, is the picture of God. He was like, it doesn't matter when you came in, you're still going to get paid the salary for the day. So the guys who came in last still got paid the hundred, but the guys who worked all day still got paid a hundred. And the picture that Jesus is trying to say, he says, it doesn't matter if you've been a lifelong believer or one who just started believing yesterday. It's the moment you start believing is a moment that you're saved, Right. So it's 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 funny how people say it's like oh there's this there's that everything could be interpreted slightly differently but I think we can all come to the to to the conclusion that the only way to save what's happening in today's world is to acknowledge the one and only true God and Elohim right like he is the one and only and it's like, how do you do that? That's your own personal journey. I can't tell you how to do that. I can tell you how I came to it and how I believe in it and what I believe to be the truth. But at the end of the day, this is this is where I believe, and this is we were having this conversation too, which I think will tie in into this. It's like a lot of these rappers or whatever, what we believe to be the revival of the church and how the how the devil is causing confusion in 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 this realm. And I said, I do believe that this is happening in this realm and it's happening a lot within the circles of Christianity, is because what's happening is a lot of the prosperity gospel, a lot of the like the TV pastors and the, and the TikTok pastors and, and a lot of these guys is like, do I believe that God is calling these people of influence into the kingdom? Yes, I do believe that it's happening, but I also believe that they're being led into the wrong churches, into the wrong ecclesias, mm -hmm. right? Into the right. And, and they're being, and their their leadership. And this is something that I told you. It's like if leadership matters, Right. This is where leadership and being submit to the right leadership matters, because, for example, and I use Justin Bieber. Right. And the whole Hillsong United scandal that ended up happening. Do I believe that Justin Bieber in his heart wanted to give his life to God? Yes, I do. I do believe that that exchange probably saved his life, at least his soul. Right. But do I believe that him being attached to a pastor and in an organization that was one, a tear. They're one of the tears, right? They're one of the tears. When you see, if you've seen the documentary and you see what happens in a church, a mega church like that, and I've been a part of a mega church like that, I'm going to be the first one to say that it happens. It's quick to happen. When you have bad leadership accompanied with, you know, a brand of Christianity where instead of being open and submitting to leadership and, and and correction when they lack that you get things like what happened at Hillsong and what happens to all the big A-list names that were attached to that, like Justin Bieber and all these countless other people. I don't think that they're wrong for accepting Jesus Christ. I think it's, they got put in a really bad situation instead of being like, yo, homie, get in your Bible, start studying, get attached to a good, a good local church that preaches the way, right? And it, it's like, you have to know what the way looks like. And I'm not saying being Catholic is the wrong way or whatever, because I do believe that people who, who, I don't think it's a denomination thing. I think it's you hear it and you know that it's true. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it could be you could be denominational Pat Baptist or uh, Lutheran or you could be charismatic or Pentecostal. But the truth is the truth. And like I said, there are people who walk in that spirit. There are people who walk in that Holy Spirit. Like and I said, I use our mom as an example that is like she's like one of those ladies that just walked in the spirit. Like you were about to do something wrong and you got a beep from her because you had a beeper. You got a beep from her saying, yo, don't do this. Or I got a phone call. Mijo, que tu hace? And it's like she knew I was about to do something wrong. But before it's like even did it. <laughs> before I even did it, it's like she walked in the way. Why? Because she was tapped into that source. I believe she was tapped into that source and that source is what keep, keeps us in the right way. And I believe that there are certain people in power that are tapped into that source, but I also believe that there are other people on the other side that are tapped into the wrong source. 
and they have a louder voice than the people that are tapped into the right source. Yes. And that's one of my fears, bro. That's one of my fears is that uh, a majority of people are being led down the wrong road, right? Because there's this, there's this popular belief that when you get to heaven, there's going to be everybody's welcome. You know, the gates are wide open. No, make the light, make the path to the light hard for the weak and weary not to follow. Do you know, here's the thing. It's open. It's like, here's my favorite comparison. Jiu-jitsu is for everyone, but not everyone is for jujitsu. Mm hmm right it's like can it be for everyone a hundred percent but here's the fact of the matter is hey, here's that's pro wrestling you can put pro wrestling in there too <laughs> right right like like it's 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 simple and i'm not saying that that we all far, fall short of the grace of god this is this is this is the, this is a universal truth that i think everybody every believer can say it's like we're all sinners inherent sinners and this is because of the fall but the fact of the matter is, it's the renewal of the mind. It's 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 the slow, everyday toil of like, am I getting in my word? Am I praying enough? And it's not even about the works, right? It's about the relationship. It's about the relationship that you have with your creator. It's about that that time you spend. Because it's like, it's like I spit into, just because you know me doesn't mean you know me. Hey, how many people? Yeah. 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 Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, how many people do you know on your phone, in your phone, that you have their contact information, you have their email, you know, their birthday, you know, but do you know what happens behind closed doors? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like the level of intimacy you need to have to be accepted into the kingdom, I think is, is something that you need to sit here and say, it's like, God, like, 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 for, for example, and I'm going to be very vulnerable here. Like I've struggled with certain things in my life where like behind closed doors, nobody knew about. Right. And you can, we, we, I, and I want to keep that private because that's between me and my creator, but it's like certain things that happen behind closed doors that I've struggled with. Let's just take food. For example, I'm a big dude. I struggle with food and I need to eat, but like, I don't need to be eating sugar. Right? And it's like, I, I look at God and I talk to God. I'd be like, God, man, like, why is it so hard for me to put down a damn donut? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I'm going to use that as an example. Right. But then for other men, it's women. And I know, and this is an, this is an example I use for people that are struggling in their faith. It was like, Hey, I know guys that are good dudes, like all in all, they're good dudes to other dudes. Right. But they fall into that they just don't know how to handle women. They don't know how to take care of a woman. They're good guys as far as like they're great business partners. They, they know a lot about a subject. They're great athletes. They, you, you put something on their back, they go above and beyond. They might even be great dads. But the one weakness that they have is like, if they get a little too much in their system, they're quick to cheat on their spouse. Mm-hmm. Or they're in the wrong environment. They gamble their entire mortgage away. Or, you know, they put a needle in front of them. They fall into that. And it's like, all in all, they're, they, they have that thorn that's on their side. That's the thing. And it's like, God doesn't call us to get necessarily rid of those things. He calls us to endure. It's mm -hmm. like, I am your peace. And it's like, to me, it's like, like my thorn's always been, you know, food. And God is just like, but... I'm, I sustain you. It's like, I should be enough. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you're not going to take this away from, you're not going to take this away from me. You're just going to help me endure. You're going to help me be better in this moment. It's like, it's like, sometimes I sit there and then, bro, I, I, I'll be straight up with you as a big dude. Sometimes I want to go by. So there's this, there's this great cookie place here in Dallas called Insomnia Cookies. I don't know oh, if y'all have one. it. On. Got one right around the corner. Yeah, bro. Insomnia. If you've never had an insomnia that's life, cookie, bro. bro that's insomnia salted cookies caramel? are crack. That salted it's, caramel one. All of them. All of them. Insomnia cookies are crack. All right, like legit. It's crack. <laughs> they must put crack in it. And like, there are nights where me and Alyssa are up watching, you know, whatever Netflix show, and I'm like, yo, insomnia cookies. 
<laughs> and I literally, and 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 in that moment, I have to sit there and be like, God, do I need insomnia cookies? <laughs> and then I hear a little voice inside my head goes, but I'm an off, aren't I? And I'm like, you're right, I don't need them. <laughs> you know, but it's like that example. It's that example. Like, yo, sometimes I struggle. Like, it's a legit struggle. struggle. Dude, we all struggle with with a vice, with uh with behaviors, you know, but it's mm. it's up to us, right? It's up to us. It, if you're that type of person that you're waiting for something exterior to affect your life, to make change, it's never going to happen. It the, the change has happened from the inside out. It's the microcosm to the macrocosm is when you see the change. And the only way, in my opinion, and for, for me, how I've developed my relationship with Yahuwah was seeking internally because I wasn't finding anything outside. So my advice for any listeners, like if you're struggling with like an addiction, if you're struggling with a vice, with a behavior, with a, what you know, if you're, you know, if you're a sexual deviant, I mean, no, we don't judge, but those are things that you need to work on yourself because if you're not religious, then let's look at it from an energy and frequency standpoint. Okay. Cause I know a lot of our listeners are into that. Okay. The moment that you're doing things that aren't aligned with your higher self, for example, let's say, um, let's say fapping just for, just for putting out an example, right? Fapping, fapping is a low vibrational thing. What's fapping? Masturbating, bro. Oh, <laughs> masturbation. Oh. Okay. Oh, masturbation. Oh, spanking the monkey. Spanking consuming, the monkey. Consuming corn, but corn. with the P, but with the P, the corn. Yeah. yeah. We all, we, we all know what corn means. We yeah, all know what, what the corn, P hub, the only you know, fans, the OS. Yes, uh, drugs, it. infidelity. Things like those are all low frequency, low vibrational things that eventually will affect your life in the physical. Right. Yeah. So. And again, I'm addressing to those people that aren't religious, but do, you know, believe in the frequency. So if you want to change your life, you need to one, look at yourself and then you need to work on yourself as as good as possible and start flipping all the negative things to the positive things. So all the positive frequency, the good frequency, the high frequency things that are going to affect your life for the positive, right? So it's all inward to the outward, not the outward to the inward. And and I and I hope that really resonates with some of our listeners because everyone right now is going through it, bro. Everyone's going through their own. I shit. don't know. I don't know one person right now in my circle or not that has doesn't have a major struggle. I think if it's not financial, it's spiritual. If it's not spiritual, it's something, bro. Like, I don't know anybody who's not going through it. Like one of my favorite things from one of my friends, man, he's my tax guy. He goes, yo, life be life in. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be like, yo, it's expensive to be alive, bro. <laughs> bro, bro, what, what, what do they say in Florida? You, you need two jobs. You, what do they say in Miami? You need, you need two jobs of fraud just to make it. You know what I'm saying? It's bad. It's bad out here. It's everywhere. It's, it's, it's hard. Everywhere. It's out out here in these YouTube streets, bro. It's bad, <laughs> and, it, and it's, and it's one of those things. And it's one of those things where I tell people, it's like, dude, regardless of what's happening in the world to bring it back to the original topic that we were calling. It was like, I was in a time warp last week, last week. I was in a time warp. I was literally went into one portal where I was in complete peace and tranquility with my future spouse, my kid and, and my family. And then I got out of that portal and I'm like, wow, life didn't stop just because I went into this mental space. I went into isolation and it was peaceful. Bro, none of it matters at the end of the day. Bro, I spent exactly. more. I, I was I was out on the beach in the middle of the night spending time with my girl, the ocean, and what really was like God was like when when you when you realize it, at night, at night is a great picture. Like there's a great song. God, it's a great song. And and songs are prayers, especially Christian songs. I believe those songs are prayers. But like for all the faults of Hillsong United, I'm about to give it up for their worship team. There's that song, Oceans. You ever heard that song, Oceans, right? Um, so the lyric goes, uh, ask it, the prayer goes, uh, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Where my 
where my faith could be made stronger in the presence of my savior. Right. So it's, the song is called oceans. And when you think about the song is called an ocean and you're asking God to take you deep to where my feet may wander. And you think about floating out in the ocean and you're going so deep where it's like, yo, I don't even know if I'm going to make it. (laughs) That's the type of faith you're asking God to give you. And you're out there. And I got that picture in my mind as the tide is rolling in and it's middle pitch black. The only thing I see is the moon and a couple of the stars and the just and I'm like, oh God. Dude, I just had this thought right now as you as you were talking about Ugh. that. Because I had seen this video a month ago uh, on one of the one of the Bible study videos that I watch. And this guy made a really amazing point about Yeshua while he was walking on water, because there's a theory about hell is actually underwater. Right. Yeah. So the way that he put it, he's like, yo, Jesus is so holy that he stands on water because because the water fears him. I'm like, whoa, that is fire. I never thought of it that way. It's like if if the ocean is like hell, we're all because we haven't explored all the oceans, but there's a lot of mysterious things that come out of the ocean. But we'll think that about sense. that. Though. That makes sense. That makes sense. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. I'll tell you why that makes but, sense. But finish your thought. But I'm like, OK, well, if A connects to B and then B connects to C, then it has to equal D. Bro, it's for me. I was just like, OK. That makes 100% sense. So let me, okay. So who was, who was the, let's, let's, let's follow my train of thought here. Uh, John the Baptist came before Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Preaching that the Messiah Mm -hmm. is to come, right? What was John the Baptist known for? Uh, I mean, he was known for. it's 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 in his name, right? Baptizing people. Yeah, yeah. Water baptism. What does what what is the most common prayer? And it says it in the Bible, right? When you get water baptized, what does that mean? Your old you is this picture of death and resurrection. It's funny how you said that. It's like God was so holy. Jesus was so holy that he couldn't even walk on. He could he couldn't even be in water. It was like, yeah, home. <laughs> like, but it only happened after his water baptism. Mm. So the human spiritually was sent to hell and brought back and he was holy. So when you think about water baptism, I've been water baptized, you've been water baptized and we've accepted Jesus Christ into our hearts. It's like the old you spiritually meaning, right? Like the, the, this, this is still the renewal of the mind. It's still a thing, right? Because this is a physical world that we live in. But the renewal of the mind is like you are dead to who you were before. Spiritually, you're literally, you're, you, the physical spiritual you went to hell. And you've been resurrected like our Lord Jesus Christ, like our Lord Yeshua, right? And you're just like, oh, now, now I can see why I can walk Oh, and, and I have to walk in a different way because I am not who I was before. Mm-hmm. Right. So why did Peter, why was Peter also allowed to walk on water? Because he believed him. He had until faith. He, until he had a moment of disbelief. He, he, he doubted. Yes. Right. Moment until he had, a mo- he had a moment of disbelief. So why is like when God, it, it is funny how merciful he is in, the, in these moments, right? When he sees his own, his number one guy, Peter, the guy, the rock in which the ecclesia, the church is built on, even though he had that moment of weakness, it was like, hey, he gave he picked him up by the arm. Oh, ye said, of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Mm-hmm. And it's funny how it's like, if even Peter, the rock of the church, the rock in which I am going to build my church. If he had moments of disbelief, what makes you think, guy on YouTube? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have no exactly, moments. <laughs> exactly. 
It was like, 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 yo, homie, like, Jesus is the only one who's perfect. And even he said, yo, I'm going to build my church on you. But just so you know, it's not because you're perfect. It's because you're so imperfect that you're going to help others come to me. You're going to, you're so imperfect. You have to point to me to be like, yo, homie, like, yo, he's the only way. He's the only way. It's insane. I say that it's like, it's like, it's like the picture, the picture of the, of the baptism. If, If water is hell, right? You literally have to go to hell and back to be made holy. And it makes sense, dude. It makes sense. Yeshua is so holy, he can't go into the water because the water fears him. That's crazy. Well, I absolutely love having these conversations with you, bro, because, uh, you know, we start off with the current events, but then we always go deep. And I hope you guys enjoy it, too, because, you know, I feel like we're we're doing y'all's work here. You know, we're spreading, we're spreading the truth. We're spreading the love. And I, and I hope it resonates with every single one of you. So thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys. Make sure you follow us on all of our socials on YouTube, on Rumble, Cultura Truth Project, Gonzalez Media TV, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast on all major platforms, on Google, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, all of them. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the show and leave us a five-star review. Support the show. And audio only. You can't get anywhere else but there on Spreaker. So that's it for tonight's show. We love you. We appreciate you. Puerto Rico número uno. Ya tú sabes cómo es. For Daniel. See you guys on the next episode. Love you guys.